volumes that are brought in, some familiar volumes. And I'm going to distribute some of these. And I'd like you to use your measuring implement sketch. <laughs> Don't open it. Um, and uh, use your measuring implements. And I bet in many cases, you'll be able to figure out a formula for the volume of some of these fine, familiar shapes, right? So work out some volumes. Uh, I'm going to want these back, by the way, uh, just in case you run. Uh, all right. Yeah, let's see. Some other good all right. Everybody know how to figure out the volume of your shapes? What do we have here? What, what's the formula for your, your volume going to be? Uh, the side by side by length. Height by width by height, uh, by, by length, right? Uh, three quarters pi r cubed, maybe? Oh, something no, like no, no, no. Four thirds. Uh, three four quarters. Thirds. Four thirds. You know, I'm going to have to teach you how to how to derive that formula. Then you'll know it for us. Oh, man. Four thirds pi r cubed. So there's that right now. OK, so that's all pretty well known. We've, uh, we've remembered those uh, shapes pretty well. But you know, not every shape out there is a um, volume of revolution. All right. So, uh, all right. Andy, you have a fancy measuring device. Give me a formula for the volume of that. Luisana, you have a fancy measuring device. So measure some things, then tell me what the volume is. <laughs> Anybody need a That would be a way. All right. So you see, what this is a complicated shape, but we could convert this <coughs> into a simpler shape if we have the help of uh, Riemann. This is my trusty demonstration device called Riemann. You can see the delta and the sigma there, right? Sure. Don't ask, don't tell. Safe. <laughs> All right, now, Andy, uh, I'm going to make this easier for you, okay? All right, now, we did some delta x's there. Sweet. You think you'd have a better chance of... The little discs. Well, they're not quite discs, but you'll do uh, better than that, right? Let's see, we got some others here. This one, sort of a funny shape. We might get discs out of this one, but you know, I'm not trying to do volumes of revolution here, right? So we could see. Kroger's never gonna forgive me. I didn't sell this pair for this purpose. All right, so there we have We have reduced the volume problem a little bit. Now, Andy, I'm not going to let you say that's a circle. But it is a kind of cylinder because it's got a fixed delta x if I whack it right. Alright? <coughs> so you agree that uh, that one's close to a circle. I don't know about that one, Melissa. Do you want me to convert yours? Do you want me to convert yours? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> now, Andy, let me help you out there. Uh, well, first I've got to convert this. <laughs> Not too well. Oh well, you got the idea, right? Somebody asked if it was safe. Well, we'll do it a little bit safer way. All right, that's not very constant delta x. All right. All right. Now, Luisana, that's not really quite round, right? And particularly, this one's not quite round. Uh, I think we could make it a little bit even easier to figure out. Well, how about if we chop it this way, huh? Now, if I do this right, I've now converted, <laughs> I've now converted this former piece of pear into a bunch of french fry shapes. Ah, French fry shapes. 
Now, does anybody know the volume of a French fry? And I, I would suggest that you do answer. Rectangular prism. Rectangular prism, correct. He gets the lid. And he gets the lid, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, because if we do this in two stages, we could take Andy's somewhat strange shaped uh, planting bits and we could uh, convert them into rectangular prisms. Right? Now, Andy. Yeah. Can you find me the volume of that somewhat slimy French fry? Of course you can, right? Rectangular prisms. So just as you can take a pretty general area in Calc 2 and turn it into a bunch of trapezoids or um, near trapezoids, right? you can turn an arbitrary potato-shaped region into a bunch of french fries, right? And if I cut them small on the two sides, so I've got a delta x on that side, and a delta y on that side, two of those dimensions are pretty easy. Delta x times delta y, let's call the other thing h. Now is the height, I do have some potatoes here, in case anybody does want to make french fries. Is the height of this, the height function representing the vertical height of this potato, is that the same at different values of x? No. Same at different values of y? No. So it is a function of x and y, right? Somebody tell me if the cops show up, by the way. I think there's, a, no, there's no back door. <laughs> there's that door. So is the window. Uh, x, y, that's the height, times delta x, delta y. So we can think that, we can think of that as a volume element, right? 